Alright, what's happening YouTube? KK back with another basic tutorial. We're gonna go through all the elements. Last time we did fire, and now this time we're gonna do a little bit of water. And uh, I kinda wanna keep these videos to maybe like a... Not, not, not 30 minutes, maybe to like a 20, 25 minute videos, because I want these to just be real basic uh, animation tutorials. And then, as if, if you guys want, you know, more in depth tutorials, or if you guys want specific tutorials to be like, a, you know, and go into greater detail and stuff like that, just let me know in the comments. Uh, put, hit that like button, you know, just let me know what you guys want, and I'll be more than happy to uh, accommodate. For the request because this is for you guys for people who want to learn how to animate obviously so but we don't get right into it i don't play around we don't have no scripts i got i got my notes and we're just gonna do this off the bat because that's how we do these so water okay so unlike fire water has weight to it okay i'm sure you've seen water droplets or like water drip water has a weight to it and the more water, the heavier, obviously, right? So, we're just gonna start off with basic water physics, I guess. So, ooh, this is water for right now, because this, this is a basic tutorial. Uh, think of water as like those slimes from like Dragon Quest, or like video games like that. Water moves as a unit, and the more water there is, the heavier it is, which means that if water is like dripping from the ceiling, you know, there's weight to it. You know, you've seen water drip from the ceiling. It drips. And I've said, I, I, I just said this like three times before. The heavy, the more, the more water, the heavier. Okay, so water drips, boom, boom, boom. Uh, when animating water or any, anything really, you never want to use straight lines. The only time you would, you would ever use straight lines for water is let's say if it was coming out of like a geyser. So let's do it the geyser real quick if this is a geyser in the ground and the water like is pressurized it comes like straight out but even then like the initial pressure like the, the initial where it comes out of is in, is initially straight and then as it goes out you know you know I'm sure I'm, I'm sure you've seen geysers on movies or nature channels you know it's, it becomes somewhat like a uh, gas a gas yeah so it'll come out pressurized come out and then it disperses as it uh, as the pressure decreases it disperses and it becomes like little tiny water droplets in mist the mist you know uh, when you animate mist this just since we're on the topic of water and mist and stuff like that um, you, you can just animate like a cloud of something with like low opacity so Let's put the opacity of the color down to like 30 or something. And you can you can animate this with like a tween or something. You don't really have to, like if there's mist, a lot of people will just do the basic form of the mist, color it in. So it's see-through, so people, you can see the person behind it. So somebody's walking through mist or something. Oh, let me see. Somebody's walking through mist, you know. You can walk through it and you know you could add whatever effects you want to the mist so if you want the mist to be like blurry make it into a movie a movie clip with f8 you guys remember f8 then you go into properties which is at the bottom here and filters had a filter blur and we'll just super blur it and it's like super misty and you're like wow that's crazy it's misty and stuff yes it is um, <laughs> so that, you know, the water comes in different forms. It comes in, uh, liquid, solid, which is ice, but we're talking about water this time, but you know, that's just a basic overview of what it is. Ice, let's draw ice block real quick. Ice cube. Ice cube. I still, okay, there we go. Yeah, there it's ice. That's ice cube. Okay. Yay, so as you guys have gotten that information, uh, I'm just gonna talk about water being animated. So water disperses, okay? When water hits the surface, so let, let's say you're animating 
because you guys like because usually people anime fight scenes um so water disperses i've said that like five times so let me give you an example let's say water is being is shooting from this corner and this is the ground right here this is the floor and the water comes from over here like let's just say a water droplet right it's coming this way boom water is not just gonna water won't bounce like this like water is not going to like bounce unless it's uh magic water or like rubbery water but we're talking about if you want to animate semi-realistic water you don't have to get in the you know there's many different examples on how to get if you want to animate super realistic water that's like that 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 takes you know anyways basic <laughs> let me finish my thought that that just takes extra a little bit of time and and that's just for the visual appeal for it if you want it to look oh i want it to look like water that's more of like the, a visual appeal but you need to understand how water works or else even if you make water look realistic if you animate it weird it's it's just going to be strange so this is all about animation we're not trying to make stuff look pretty but water does not bounce like this water just water has an impact and it disperses kind of like an explosion water is a this liquid explosion so water does not bounce like this okay water when it hits a surface it splatters and depending on what direction it goes in this depends on where the droplets go so for example if water is coming in from this corner and it hits here because of the forward momentum it's going it's gonna do something like this it's splatter you know and as it splatters it doesn't just disappear there's little droplets that fly everywhere but water doesn't just disappear when it splatters it it'll splatter like this and this is just the initial impact animation you're gonna animate it through all the way all right actually no i'll animate that i'll i'll i'll, I'll tell i'll tell you about it and then i'll animate it we're gonna get we're gonna get more structured with these as they go along they'll just get better and better so we're not tripping and as water moves at higher speeds uh, you know um it'll leave little particles so let's say like water's falling from the ceiling it's the ceiling that's the water right and it drips and then it drips falls there's gonna be a little you know there may be a drop or two that comes with it so because when the water pinches from the ceiling it's a drip so it's here and then it goes to here and then it pinches because that water is too heavy and this water water remains so it'll pop and then the little pinch part will be its own little particle and then the droplet will drop to it'll fall and a little diagram that I wanted to make is from the top down so this is let's say that we're we're the water and this is the ground right wherever water whatever direction water is going in wherever it hits there will always be an outward like explosion like this basically there's always going to be a splatter no matter how little it is how big it is so the the the, the way gravity works you guys know the higher something is the more momentum it builds as it falls so let's just deal with like uh, water falling and hitting something and this and th this applies for if it's like a stream of water or if it's like a, a water bomb or something it all it does the same thing it's just different forms and they just react a little bit differently so let's say water come wherever water hits let's say the water falls right in the middle the more centered water is when it hits something the more uh, equal the splatter is going to be so if something hits right in the middle or water's falling straight down even if it's like a stream if, it, if you if you turn on the sink and it's like a stream of water it goes straight down and it, it does it in, and uh, water is never predictable unless it's moving along uh, a 
like a natural curve or something like that. So, but I'll, I'll give you an example of that after this one. So water falls straight down, hits the middle. The splatter is going to disperse in, in, in a pretty much in a pretty uniform way. The droplets, whatever, however many droplets fly, you know, there's no real science to it. Like, oh, this many droplets have to fly from it. It's just, you know, if it makes sense, boom, hits the middle. If it hits this side and it's coming in from this direction, it hits this side, you know, the water's still going to come out from behind it because it's not just, but whatever direction it's going in, that's where a majority of the splatter is gonna be. Still some behind it, you know. And also if water comes from this way, it goes boom, it'll disperse. Boom, boom, in this direction. And then even after it splatters, so let's say it splattered already, boom, splattered over here. The water flew, now the water is going to sit. Okay, water doesn't just go away. And then you animate the splatter, and then the little droplets and stuff might disperse or be somewhere, you know. You don't have to get into too, too great detail. It, it depends on how realistic or how detailed you want it to be. But like I said, the movement of everything. Um, like and he beat it up, so let me see how it is, so. Part of my six. All right, well, this is something rough and quick, but you get you get the idea. It leaves. Now this isn't the most detailed, the most realistic looking water. It's not it's not clear, but you watching this, I feel like I think you can understand how this works. So let's do let's do. So down be here. Oh. The little faucet came on real fast, boom. And then water comes out. So that's this is like a real rough example of what like a stream of water would do. And you know, animating somebody being wet is different. Like, like I said, if you want to go for, like for more realistic, like an anime feel, like oh, this is how, you know, you know, that 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 takes that that's a little extra. But we're just talking about the motion of water here. So 
these videos are like the basics, like the, the motion of what we're animating, not anything else. All the extra little stuff that comes with it. Hair being wet. How do I animate hair being wet? How do I animate clothes being wet? That is more not really part of the animation. That's more of the like aftermath of what happens when you are wet with water. But we're talking about the motion of water and liquids, basically. So a real rough. So water splatters, it disperses. The more water there is, the heavier, the more pressure there is, the, the, the harder water hits. So water's pressurized, it's more forceful than like a drop of water. Or if it's like a giant, yeah, let's give it to you here. So let's say this is a person. This is a person. That's a little dude. A water drop of this, a big old water drop like this falling on him. The, it's, it's, the sizes differ. This isn't gonna have that much of an effect. This is going to drench him and push his body down. This is probably gonna make him flatten on the ground. And this is just gonna, this this amount of water is like a freaking rock almost. Like a rock that blows up. So water's heavy. The more water there is, the more, the heavier it is. And the more damage it, it'll do. And that's, that's basically like uh, the basics of water, like the super basic version. Water never stops moving. Uh, these little effects I put in here, like the highlights of water, because water is reflective. So the li the lighter parts is like is, is the uh, reflectivity of the water bouncing off the top, and the darker parts here is like the shadow of it to give it more depth. You know, the shadowy parts, the darker parts of water is always going to be away from the sun, like how this that's how light works. But since it's translucent and it's see-through, which is translucent, uh, you can, it, everything kind of works. Subsurface scattering, excuse me, that's just a whole nother topic for another video, but uh, for now, this is, this has been basic animation tutorials with QK. So this is water, real basic water. If you guys want a more in-depth on how to animate different types of water, ice, stuff like that, uh, let me know in the comments, hit that, hit, hit the like button, but for now we're going to keep it as these simple, simple tutorials so you guys can just get started, you know, and because all the other stuff basically comes with just practice and time, but if you know the basics on how stuff works and you have like basic knowledge of motion and re reaction and reaction, then you guys can pump out animations with water and stuff like that. But like I said, study it up, look online, excuse me, I'm just... I woke up and I did this tutorial. I just woke up, so I go online, like look up geyser videos, look up people using fire hoses to get a more realistic idea. This is just like I said, super something super quick, something super basic. Um, there'll be less rambling in other videos too. These will get better as they go along, for sure. So to leave you guys with some little extra notes as I draw a face, because that's what we gotta do. Um, Water has mass and weight. The large mass has more pressure. The more bigger the water is, the more pressure, the more weight there is to it. I never use straight lines when you're animating water. You always want them to be, you know, it's, it's kind of flowy. They don't have to be this. That's, like I said, unless it's coming out of a fire hose and it's, you know, spraying out in a super strong, or like a, like a, uh, a water jet. A water jet is basically a laser. So, but if you're animating regular water, that's it. And in one of my other tutorials, uh, which will be at the end of this video, that you can click on, I talk about how, uh, so just to reiterate real quick, straight line, this is the surface of water. Whatever hits the surface of water, whatever point the water is hit, a ripple effect. So if water hits here, this part is going to go down, not this dramatically. And then everything's gonna ripple out. And everything's gonna move in a snake-like formation until the snakes get thinner, smaller, smaller. 
and then it becomes straight again and settles. So don't forget that. Wherever water hits, wherever something hits steel water, there's an impact. And depending on how fast or how hard it hits it, you have the splatter effect. So this has been KK on a water a basic water tutorial. Let me draw my face. Happy Easter to people, to everybody who had Easter stuff yesterday. Uh, I thank you guys for watching this video. I thank you guys for being subscribed. And if you guys want me to form, if you guys want like in in uh, in depth to uh, files, so you guys could follow and have some flash files that you guys can go back to. Uh, feel free to support me on my Patreon, and I I'm making these for you guys. So as soon as I start getting some some people on there like I said no pressure you know if you if you're willing and able to by all means I would appreciate it and it just it, it, it'll just make me free me up to be able to do this like forever or make this what I do because I love animating and doing these tutorials and stuff like that so there's a link tree to my Instagram and stuff like that in the descriptions which will be in this in the description of all my videos so but, you know, don't forget to do that. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And next week we will be doing electricity, lightning, whatever you want to call it. That's, that's really fun. So, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to go back to sleep. Peace.